everyone welcome to the course on computer aided drug design. We will continue on the topic of uh, force fields or molecular mechanics this is going to be a very important topic as I mentioned. Uh, so, we have to spend lot of time on this. Now, these empirical force fields each atomic number is divided into atom types okay, based on the bonding and environment. For example, carbon can be many types sp3 carbon, sp2 carbon, sp carbon, aromatic carbon, carbonyl carbon okay, then uh, a cyclopropane type of carbon, cyclopropene type of carbon so on actually okay. And then parameters are assigned based on the atom types okay. So, each of this uh, carbon will may have a different carbon carbon bond length okay and the constant where we use uh, that also will change depending upon its sp3, sp3 or sp2, sp2 and so on. So, we will look at some of those examples. There are different types of force fields uh, depending upon uh, uh, what type of parameters they choose, what type of equations they choose okay. Uh, like one family mm2, mm3, mm4 these are molecular mechanics force field for small molecules. These are very good mm2 or mm3 is good enough for small molecules if you are looking at drugs okay. Charm this is a chemistry at Harvard macromolecular mechanics this is another force field. Amber assisted model building with energy refinement, OPLS optimized parameters for liquid simulation, CFF consistence force field. So, this is also used nowadays quite a lot, CVFF valence consistent force field, then MMFF Merck molecular force field 94, then UFF universal force field. These are just few examples, but there are many, many, many types of force fields um, which are there and generally I think MM2, um, the CVFF they are, uh, are quite used um, very commonly and of course, charm and amber is also used quite commonly. Okay, so, these force fields like MM2, MM3, amber, Sibyl, UFF, MMFF etcetera they differ in the functional forms what type of uh, uh, terms are used for bond uh, stretching or angle bending and so on okay and the parameter values. Parameter values will change. So, the functional forms may be differing from one force field to another and the parameters may be differing from one field. Do not mix and match this is very very important. So, if I use uh, uh, one say mm3 uh, I will do all my calculations for all the set of uh, molecules with mm3. I will not mix and match because each set of force field is internally self consistent. So, remember that like I said the functional forms within force field may differ, the parameter values may differ. So, if I use uh, for some molecules uh, mm3 and some molecules I use amber I will get different answers it is completely wrong. Uh, some force field use united atoms that means what do they do this they condense hydrogen H uh, with the heavy atoms to reduce the total number of atoms, but there is some reduction in accuracy. So, instead of putting H separately carbon separately they may have a united atom which may uh, condense H into the C and they may have parameters. So, but little bit of inaccuracy, but the number of uh, um, calculations reduce dramatically ok. Uh, so, for example, if I take mm2 let us take mm2 uh, look at the different types of carbons mm2 has ok different types of carbons sp3 carbon. Um, sp2 carbon in alkene, sp2 carbon in carbonyl imine, sp carbon, cyclopropane carbon, radical carbon, carbocation, sp2 carbon cyclopropene, sp2 carbon in aromatic, sp3 carbon in cyclobutane. So, each of these carbon differs, each of these carbon differs. So, you may have different force constants, you may have different uh, um, R naught values and Similarly, look at this nitrogen, so many types of nitrogen ok, so many types of nitrogen sp3 nitrogen, sp2 nitrogen amide type of nitrogen, sp nitrogen, uh, pyridine, uh, ammonium ok, then uh, pyri pyrol, axo, so n double bond n uh, and so on ama ok, nitro, NO2, imine n and similarly oxygen so many types of oxygen sp3 oxygen, oxygen carbonyl, oxygen furan, oxygen carboxylate, epoxy, amine oxide, ketonium oxygen. So, so many different types of. So, mm2 uh, has large database um, for so many types of carbons, nitrogens, oxygens, hydrogens, sulfur, chlorine, bromine 
um, and so on including even uh, metals as you can see here. Okay, so, if you have cobalt or nickel or iron or magnesium, selenium, tin, okay, so you are okay because uh, MM2 has uh, parameters for these. Um, so, calculations uh, for all these energy can be done properly. Uh, but if you have some other metal, obviously it cannot handle, you may have to go for some other force field which can handle that particular metal. Like for example, okay, platinum maybe that is not in this list, okay, only some of them. Um, sometimes uh, some softwares will assume some other similar group uh, metal uh, and replace it with uh, what they have. So, each of these uh, force fields will have a different set of uh, uh, atom types, so different parameter values, so it is always good to use only one force field for all your calculation. Uh, for example, let us look at this sp3 carbon, sp3 carbon. So, the L0 that is uh, R0 which we use there um, can be 1.523 whereas sp3, sp2 it becomes 1.497 and similarly the force constant also changes quite a lot depending upon the type of carbon right sp3, 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 sp2, 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 sp2O that is carbonyl sp3, n sp3 and so on actually. Okay. And similarly, um, if for angle bending we have theta minus theta naught, so we can have different uh, theta naught values and different constant values here depending upon say for example, carbon, carbon, carbon in sp3, carbon, carbon in sp3 with the hydrogen h you get some other uh, number here in force constant and so on actually. Okay. So, you see sp3, sp2, sp3 carbon the theta naught varies um, whereas is sp3, sp3 tetrahedral 109. Okay. So, uh, these numbers will change, these numbers will change depending upon the um, atom type and the environment. So, remember so uh, like that the database for any force field will be stored. So, when you draw a structure and you mention uh, these are the different types of carbons, these are different types of oxygens I have, automatically these numbers will be selected. So, the bond stretching energy, bond bending energy, torsion energy, non-bonded interactions will be calculated and the total energy of the molecule will be estimated. This is how these uh, molecular mechanics force field approaches. So, the more number of uh, uh, atom types I have, um, it will try to cover as much as possible. In the overall space okay so that means your database becomes large so they will get uh, these uh, these values you know either from experimental reported in literature or through ab initio reported in literature okay um, okay so what is the average error in heat of formation when you calculate heat of formation using um, mm2 the average error on heat of formation may vary like this okay so as you can see hydrocarbons reasonably be good whereas when you go to aromatic systems uh, amines it can be quite large. Okay. So, the errors depending upon how accurate you want your um, calculations to be you can decide on what you want it to be. Okay. Um, so, there are many force fields like I said uh, MM2 this is uh, developed by Norman Allinger mainly for hydrocarbons small organic molecules has, ha has a large set of parameters like I showed you in that table large set of parameters that is continuously refined and updated for many different classes of organic compounds. So, MM2, MM3, MM3 plus, MM4 and so on. So, this is a very good force field if you are looking at drugs, organic molecules okay, without any metals or something. Then of course, uh, CFF, okay. this is uh, developed by these uh, uh, people is a general method for unifying studies of energy, structures, vibrations of general molecules and molecular crystals. Uh, the program was developed by these two is based on the Cartesian representation of the all the atoms. Okay. And then based on the CFF many other force field of this family consistent uh, came into, I will show some of them. Okay. So, uh, more of them assisted model building and energy refinement, this is called amber force field. This is widely used for proteins. So, you see uh, if you have a lot of uh, protein we can use this. Then comes charm, charm is another uh, very popular force field uh, used for small molecules and macro molecules. So, generally um, 
mm type of force fields are used uh, uh, for organic drugs amber is used for proteins uh, charm is used for uh, small molecules and macromolecules this is the rule of thumb so you can use mm type of force field you can use amber or charm okay depending upon whether it's small molecule drugs macromolecules or um, whether it's a protein cvff this is broadly used for small molecules and macromolecules yes some softwares use that cvff uh, that's a consistent valence force field uh, uh, this is cosmos nr it's a hybrid of quantum mechanics and molecular mechanics so it combines little bit adds little bit of quantum mechanics uh, adapted to a variety of inorganic compounds okay so if you are looking at inorganic um, organic compounds biological macromolecules including semi empirical calculations atomic charges nmr so cosmos nmr is optimized for nmr based structural elucidation okay remember that uh, in drug discovery we do not spend much time on that actually and this is again Grumos it is a it is a free software it can be used for a lot of uh, dynamic simulations uh, this is called Groninger molecular simulation a force field that comes as part of the this software it is a free software for dynamic study it is molecular dynamics computer simulation package for the study of biomolecular systems ok so if you are using that software you will be using this force field ok more force fields um, OPLS optimized potential for liquid simulation so there are many OPLS AA OPLS UA OPLS 2001 2000 developed by uh, Jorgensen at the Yale University Department of Chemistry it is very good for liquid simulation ok then ECEPP first force field for polypeptide molecules developed by Omeni, Sherega and colleagues then QCFF PI this is a general force field for conjugated molecules UFF like I said universal force field they call it a general purpose force field parameters for the full periodic table including the actinoids developed at Colorado State University so they try to have parameters for all the atoms in the periodic table ok then the consistent force field so these are family of force field adapted to broad variety of organic compounds force fields for polymers Okay, so if you are interested in polymers, metals, um, then uh, maybe you can go for this type of uh, force field. Okay, then uh, we also have uh, condensed phase optimized molecular potentials for atomistic simulation studies, COMPESS. And this is uh, developed by this particular Sun um, computers at Molecular Simulation Incorporated for a variety of molecules in the condensed phase. Now available through Accelerix. Accelerix is a software. Uh, commercial software so if you are having that software you will be having this particular also ok uh, Merck molecular force field developed by Merck company MMFF for a broad range of uh, molecules as you can see some of these force fields are um, specifically developed for their internal use um, which might not be available for general public um, whereas uh, things like MM2, MM3, uh, Charm, Amber CV, CFF you may get it uh, as a freeware ok. Uh, water, water plays a very important role um, because uh, when you have proteins water uh, will be found water molecules will be found so modeling water also has become a big uh, issue nowadays um, so should I have uh, implicit solvent that means I have a change in the dielectric constant depending upon water or air or should I have explicit so um, water as you know uh, it is a very interesting system it has got three sides ok so these and these can form the hydrogen bond donor this can be hydrogen bond acceptors ok uh, the distance is given um, and the angle is given here. So tip 3p transferable intermolecular potential with three points like three points this 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 and tip p4p is represented by simple rigid molecule. So, the model looks like this ok, um, there is a 12 here, 6 here term ok, then there is a constant Kc, this is the electrostatic constant given by this, Qi, Qg are the partial charges related to the charge of the electron, Rij is the distance between two atoms or charged sides, A and B are the Lenard zone potential term. So, um, imagine if you have a lot of water present. Um, the calculations increase because you need to add uh, some extra terms 
you need to consider water because water plays a very important role in hydrogen bond formation, donor as well as acceptor, uh, ligand protein interactions, changes in the conformation all these happens because of uh, the water. Although the energy is uh, as I showed you long time back is uh, much much less, less than 10 kilocalories, but uh, it plays a very important role in the conformation the uh, ligand takes with respect to the active site when it gets uh, uh, bound to the uh, protein. Okay. So, water is a very important uh, parameter we need to consider. Okay. Let us look at some functional forms of these force field. Charm. As I said charm is a widely used force field and as you can see this term is the bond uh, stretching. Okay. I showed you long time back they have a term for uh, um, angle bending they have a term for dihedral, okay. then they have a term for uh, electrostatic and Leonard Jones potential. Okay. So, this is what charm used very uh, whatever I have been talking about. Okay. So, they have very clear simple looking force field. Uh, there are files external files RTF residue topology files this stores information about atom mass, atom type partial charges, connectivity, internal coordinates, residue definition. Then we have the parameter files contains parameters for four cons, force constant all these parameters. Okay. Equilibrium geometries, van der Waal radii other data. So, equilibrium geometry is the geometry it takes um, when it is the equilibrium state. Then there is another file called protein structure file, files actually used by charm force field dependent contains information from the RTF files. Okay, have a hierarchical organization of atoms, residues, mix segments. So, um, these are the files that are necessary if you are running a charm force field. Okay. Then comes amber, look at this amber, amber also looks um, very much similar. You have uh, the term for uh, uh, bond stretching, bond bending, uh, torsion. Okay. Uh, Leonard Jones potential, the okay, electrostatic and of course, we also have uh, uh, the, the um, hydrogen bond term also that is one extra. Then CVFF consistent valence. Okay. As you can see uh, the bond stretching has become different Morse term not uh, this type of term. Okay. They use this they use the Morse term. Um, then they use uh, the same equation for the angle bending, uh, torsion. Okay. Uh, now, you see there are lot of uh, cross terms are there, okay. St stretch, stretch, uh, angle, angle, uh, stretch, angle like that you know lot of cross terms. And then of course, uh, this is your electrostatic and this is a Leonard John. Okay. So, CVFF uses many uh, cross terms as you can see here. So, obviously, you need uh, extra parameters, these are extra parameters which you require if you are going to use cross terms. Okay. This is called CVFF force field. Uh, another force field MMFF94, look at the equation for bond stretching. Okay. So, they have a uh, uh, completely different equation, they consider uh, square terms as well as uh, uh, linear terms okay. as you can see here and uh, you can see these are uh, constant but then for the angle bending also you can see square term and a linear term okay out of plane bending energy i talked about if you have uh, three atoms um, sorry if you have four atoms three may be in one plane the fourth one may be out of the plane so that is also included here these are non bonded interactions okay the electrostatic and the Leonard John potential uh, so MMFF uses um, okay, not only the uh, quadratic term, but also the linear terms as you can see here. Okay. This is another force field called GAFF. Okay. If you look at the GAFF, so we have the uh, stretching using the normal uh, square term, bending and then uh, torsion and then uh, they have uh, the standard uh, term for uh, electrostatic and Leonard John. So, different types of force field uh, terms. So, that is why in the beginning I mentioned that never mix and match force field. So, always use the same force field. So, as you can see the functional forms can be very different between force fields and of course, the corresponding parameters also will be very different 
between each force field. So, always use the same force field if you are uh, studying a set of system and if you are trying to compare a set of system. Okay. Um, so, we know how to use the force field, um, which one to select and what is the difference between this force field. Then comes the boundary conditions. So, what is this boundary conditions? If you have, so, if you have a molecule, I want to study the molecule. So, the molecule may be surrounded um, by some solvent or water or it could be in a vacuum. For example, if you are studying uh, the energy or conformation of a molecule which is very dilute form or if it is in a gas form we can consider it as vacuum. Okay. So, um, there is uh, no solvent interaction, uh, there is another, another molecule of that same type is also not there because um, if it is in gas phase it may be very far apart. Okay. So, it has become easy we do not have to consider a molecule, molecule non bonded interaction or if you have a solvent then there will be a solvent molecule interaction. Okay. So, if I have say chloroform there will be say hundreds of chloroform surrounding my uh, drug then there could be lot of uh, interactions between the chloroform molecule and the drug non bonded interaction electrostatic van der Waals and so on actually or hydrogen bonds. So, um, when you consider vacuum calculations are easy we just have that molecule and study it um, when you have solvent you may surround it with water or solvent or chloroform or methanol. So, you are going to have lot of uh, non bonded interaction between the molecule and the solvent. Um, so, how many solvents do I consider layer? How many uh, layers? So, shell. So, we can consider uh, um, between R1 and R2 okay. or we can have a cut off that means no forces after a certain distance because uh, if you consider solvent uh, up to certain uh, 3 layers or 4 layers then after the 4th layer it is like a vacuum right. So, um, we need to balance and of course, if you have too many layers of solvent then the calculations also become uh, too many. You may have uh, almost factorial um, extra calculations to be done to determine all the non bonded interaction. So, to be uh, more realistic you may have many layers of solvent uh, like your molecule and there will be solvent, 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 solvent or um, the calculations become too many or uh, do I make it a little bit approximate and assume only a few layers of solvent. So, that is the question uh, we need to answer. Uh, there are different approaches some is called uniform decay. So, the the interaction of this is much more than the interaction of this, interaction of this. So, there is a uniformly decreasing level of interactions that is called this uniform decay. Periodic boundary condition, we will talk about this more in detail later. So, periodic boundary conditions places the molecular in a molecular system in a periodic box and adds water or solvent molecules. The molecules can move in a constant density environment basically it maintains the density uh, of uh, the entire system the molecule with the solvent. So, different uh, approaches can be followed I can think about a vacuum that means I have only my molecule nothing else. Um, so, there is no interaction with uh, anything else um, solvent I could consider solvent surrounding my molecule. Uh, so, there could be non bonded interaction between the solvent and the main compound uh, or hydrogen bonds. Okay. So, how many layers of it do I consider that becomes a challenge actually. Do I just consider one layer or two layers or three layers or four layers. So, the calculations become more uh, intensive if I consider more and more and more layers. Okay. Uh, another approach is the uniform decay of the interaction of the um, solvent with the main compound. Then another approach is this periodic box. Um, this is a very important concept uh, which is generally used uh, when we talk about proteins. So, what it does is it places the molecular system inside a box containing water or solvent molecules. Okay. So, density is maintained constant. So, if uh, a solvent goes out of the box then another solvent is assumed to enter from the opposite direction okay, that is what is called periodic box. We will talk about this little bit um, as we go along now. So, different types of boundary conditions needs to be considered. As you know proteins need to be in uh, water environment so that uh, it can assume proper conformation. Okay. Uh, for example, if 
protein is surrounded by water, the hydrophilic portions may come out, the polar, the non-polar hydrophobic regions may go inside. So, the conformations can change dramatically depending upon the solvent uh, or the boundary condition. Okay, so, for example, vacuum like I said, I may have just the molecule and I may look at the energy of this molecule. So, and what conformation this molecule takes place. So, I can study this. Okay. Uh, I can calculate uh, shape, size or uh, heat of formation of this molecule. There is nothing else surrounding this all alone. So, it is like a vacuum or gas phase. Um, or I can have a, a molecule uh, or the same protein like uh, and there is nothing surrounding this. Okay. Although it is not realistic because proteins um, are generally are surrounded uh, by water because they are always found in aqueous medium. So, I can think of uh, a solvent layer surrounding this main molecule. So, obviously, there is going to be a lot of uh, hydrogen bond accepting and donor happening okay, between all these water molecules and the solvent. So, the, uh, the total energy of the system can be different. The energy of this molecule itself can change, the molecule can take new conformations because of that. Uh, I can consider two layers of solvent. So, as you can see the amount of calculations increase, but it is more realistic or I can consider three layers of solvent. Okay. Uh, but then uh, uh, some interesting thing is the solvent at the outermost layer um, has interaction with the solvent in the inner layer, but outside that is a vacuum. So, these solvent face a very non-realistic uh, um, forces. Okay. So, there are many approaches to handle that. We will not go into that, uh, especially the solvent in the outermost layer has this problem. Okay. Whereas, uh, the main compound has no problem because you have surrounded one layer, one layer, one layer and so on. Okay. Periodic boundary condition, let us look at this. What is this? When an object, so we have uh, a periodic box okay, and uh, we keep uh, the solvents. So, when the solvent, one solvent goes out from the box, uh, we uh, put in another solvent, sorry, another solvent from the opposite direction. So, the number of uh, solvent molecules inside the box is constant. So, the density is constant and um, if it is uh, a square, then we place uh, similar looking boxes in all direct, all sides. Okay. So, uh, we do the calculations for all. If it is a cube, then obviously, you have uh, 4 plus 2, 6 uh, sides of it. So, everywhere you assume another cube placed and you do the same calculation. So, the density of the innermost uh, cube uh, remains constant because uh, if uh, one solvent goes out um, during the calculation we assume another entering from the opposite direction. So, the number of solvent molecules are constant. So, periodic boundary condition is generally preferred which is much more accurate for considering the surroundings, okay, for considering the boundary condition. Okay. For example, um, this is a protein. Uh, this is a periodic box, uh, we have assumed it here, okay. a large uh, um, cube like, there are a lot of water molecules here. Um, so, we assume similar boxes on all the 6 sides of this cube. So, um, we can perform molecular dynamics simulations, we can perform um, conformational changes. So, if one water molecule goes out from this box to the box outside. Uh, it is assumed another water molecule will enter. So, the number of water molecules inside will be always constant. So, the density is constant okay. and uh, uh, why it is periodic because you have assumed that there are 6 more boxes of similar type on all the 6 faces of this cube. So, periodic boundary condition is uh, generally preferred like I said uh, calculations are intensive as you can see here. Uh, if I take a protein, I may have about 2000 or 3000 uh, uh, water molecules. So, we are calculating so many non-bonded interactions, hydrogen bonds uh, with the main uh, molecule. So, calculations are quite a lot. Okay. Um, I also mentioned reaction zone that is another approach by which uh, uh, we can uh, incorporate uh, boundary conditions. The reaction zone, uh, this can be considered as a replacement of atoms beyond a given distance by a thermal bath, mo bath model. So, we have the um, reaction region, we have the stochastic dynamics here, uh, you have fixed amount of atoms here. Okay. The interaction between the bath 
and the dynamic region reaction region preserves the equilibrium structure okay and then this reservoir okay maintains uh, the uh, energies these solvent molecules face actually okay that is called the reaction zone this is a stochastic boundary condition. Um, another approach is called the cutoff. Okay. So, cutoffs introduce discontinuity in the potential energy and forces. Okay. So, uh, beyond a certain distance we do not assume any solvent present. So, up to that so solvents here um, interact with the main compound and, and this portion is assumed as a vacuum. So, obviously there is a discontinuity okay, beyond uh, this. So, it cr can create problems. So, how do they do that? There are several approaches we will not go into that. Okay. Um, shifted potential that is constant term is subtracted from the potential at each value. Um, so, different types of approaches are used uh, so that uh, this type of large discontinuity does not happen. Another approach which I said is uh, uniformly decaying function that means uh, the um, solvents surround immediately has certain energy in of interaction solvents beyond that you have a uniform decay and as you go out and out and out the the effect of the solvents on the outer layer is much less. So, you get a uniform decay rather than sudden cutoff okay, that is sudden cutoff which you say um, as soon as uh, the cutoff here solvents here um, do not contribute anything to the main compound. Okay. So, we shall continue further on this uh, molecular mechanics and force field in the next class as well. Thank you very much for your time.